Okay, I gotta, I gotta address this. I apologize, guys. I'm sorry. I was not feeling well yesterday due to allergy problems. I, when you're not feeling good, you just can't do it right. And I felt sick. <laughs> oh, I still don't even feel good. Even though I've taken medicine like I did yesterday, I still don't feel good. Guys, this pollen this freaking big. You see how white my fingers are? They were this big in my area. This freaking big. And I had to go to places yesterday. Unfortunately. But I, I'm sorry. I have to apologize. Let's move on. I don't think this is going to take a long time. Because even though there were some, some things on here that were good. There was only one thing that mattered. And as I've been saying it. And I know there's some people that just can't stand AEW. Let's make this clear. I got to say this right now. I'm saying it now. You know me. Anyone who knows me. I don't care who you are. I don't care what company you are. I'm just going to tell you exactly what you do. I will tell you if your cameras suck. I don't care. I will tell you your audio suck. I will tell you if your characters suck. If the wrestling itself suck. You know me. I don't care. But I'm going to say this 100% clearly. What do we have from AEW and WWE? Because people are doing this. I'm not saying just Alex is doing this. I'm not saying Solomon or JD or or even Jesse for that matter. But I'm going to say this. And I know people ain't going to like me. But I'm saying the truth. What do you got in WWE? Honestly, what do you have? One story. That covers the main roster. Not talking about NXT. Just the main freaking roster. One story. One. What do you have in AEW? You could say nearly a dozen stories. Minor ones, yes. Let's make it clear. They don't drive their stories very well. And they do more wrestling than anything else. Let's make it clear. That's what it comes down to. If you don't like their wrestling or if you love it, this is what you got. You got mostly a, maybe a dozen stories going on between Dynamite, Rampage, and ROH. Slash AEW. Which is ROH Light. Then in WWE, not counting NXT, you got one story. The strongest story they've had in a decade. The strongest they've had since the under Undertaker lost his streak. This is it. One compared to at least a dozen minor ones. That's what you got. Now, Impact Wrestling, they have about four, maybe five stories going on that are strong. But due to the fact of production problems, I can't say they're great either. But this is what you got. Like it or not. So if you hate WWE and you love AEW, that's what you guys got. If you hate AEW and you love WWE, this is what you got. And if you love Impact Wrestling, they got five strong stories. But bad production value where most of the time they're like, fucking this. Who wants to watch it? If someone told someone from Impact Wrestling to look at my videos, I would still say, guys, I love your content, but please stop zooming in when you see, you can't tell me you don't notice that your own cameraman can't keep up with the action inside the damn ring. Leave it open. Come on, it's not that hard. No one's telling you to do super great camera work. Just zoom out. I'm just saying. Okay, first match, Brawling Brutes versus Pretty Deadly and the Austin Fury. Now, before we got started with that, excuse me. Uh, if I sneeze or itch, itch my eyes, I'm sorry. But they give the vape pack, and they did it three or four times during the night of Roman Reigns' nearing thousand-year run. Not thousand years. <laughs> Thousand-day run. Ugh. Oh, almost forgot. I've said Nick Aldis has had 11 to near 1200 day run. I wish to apologize for that. I will take ownership if I screw up. I thought his reign was over, over 1100 days, nearing 12. My mistake. His number, if you go on to the wiki and check NWA, it's 1000, what was it, 43 or 48? I think it's 43. So I wish to apologize saying that 
Roman Reigns is run if it doesn't have 1100 days, then the 1200 will never match a Nick Aldis, which is true. If he doesn't win within 43 to 50 days, I think it's 43 days, unless it's 48. But I believe it's 43 days from now. He will top Nick Aldis. And I will have to say he's the longest running champion of any promotion in recent memory. That's it. Unless it's one of the really indie minor ones. This is what you get from NWA. 1,043 to 48 days. He better make that 43 to 48 days or I will still chew him out. But I must take ownership. I said the wrong numbers. That's the truth. And I like to be honest. If I find something out, I tell you whether I look like an idiot or not. It's better to be truthful than it is to be a, a, a jackass and lie. I don't like lying. I really don't. Anyway, we got this match. And just before the match, we got Austin Fury talking about Roman Reigns' run along with his own. He's trying to, trying to do the coattail thing. Trying to say, well, Roman Reigns got a thousand days. I got about 200. Maybe... I'll tie it into that, and that's what happened, and then we get the match. <clears throat> oh. Was it a bad match? No. Was it an okay match? Yes. And what did we get? Pretty Deadly and Theory winning. Question is, what does this mean for Pretty Deadly, and what does this mean for Austin Fury? Don't know yet. It's going to count on what they're going to do next. I just don't know what they're going to do when Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens shows up. Will Austin Fury help out pretty deadly? Because they need it. I'm being honest here. I don't believe they're going to last long. Look, guys. Everyone that's from NXT that showed up on the main rosters, I don't feel like they're staying very long. There's a good chance at least 20 or 30% of them or more are going to be released. I don't trust Vince. I don't. He's done it multiple times before. You bring in a whole bunch of people and guess what? They're gone. They get seen on TV for a couple of weeks or maybe a month or two. And then we hear they're gone. Instant. I just, I don't trust Vince. Next, <laughs> the OC versus Hit Row. Let me give it to you like this. They don't want to leave alone Top Dollar. I don't like Top Dollar. But I don't hate him either. Was he stupid to do that helo over the, the top turn rope and screw it up? Yes. But they don't leave that shit alone. They still have not left him alone, particularly when it comes to a Michael Cole. Michael Cole has not left him alone. And when you see the end of the match, when Top Dollar and Ad Adondas attacks, you get a birthday boy in an AJ Styles. I think he's 46. Now 46, 45 years old, I believe. I think he's 45, 46. He takes out, not Adonis. He takes out fucking Top Dollar. He takes Top Dollar out. He nails him with a phenomenal forearm. He is down. And the worst thing. <laughs> you get Michael Cole rapping. I don't remember what the rap was. I don't remember how he rapped because supposedly they did a diss track on the OC and you see a, a, a Michael Cole, well, here Michael Cole, rapping. He is no, he, he's no caster, I'm sorry. If they're trying to make him like caster from, from Acclaim, he ain't even damn close. But this shows you how they truly think of Top Dollar. They are just fucking with him. That's got to mean something. Either he's going to quit or he's not going to come in because sooner or later he's going to get sick of it. We haven't seen him on TV for at least a month or so, easily. Now, you can see one of the reasons why. Next, one of the qualifying matches for the Money in the Bank is for the ladies. Now, Grace and Waller effect. I'll do this one first before the match. The Grace and Waller effect had a lovely Oscar who decided to show how easily she can make that miss and... <laughs> that blue mist that she has in her mouth. You guys tell me below, does Asuka look off? I don't know what it is. I know what Asuka looks like. And the way she looks, kind of looks, she looks a little off. Maybe it was because of the thing in her mouth. But when you look at Asuka, who doesn't look her age, she's in her 40s, she does not look old. In that segment, she looked off. 
I don't know what it is. But you guys tell me below if you notice anything. But she does her bit. She speaks in Japanese, which she can speak English. Guys, if you don't know, she can speak English when she wants. She can't. She may not be perfect in English, but she can do it. And she made it very clear that she wanted to hype up how things are in Japanese, which is fine. I have no problem with it. I, I, I'm, I don't mind it at all because even though I don't know what she's saying, doesn't mean with Grayson Waller, it doesn't make any sense. Now, I got to say this about Grayson Waller and his, and his show compared to The Miz. It is a much more better experience seeing The Miz or seeing Kevin Owens' KO show. I'm sorry. If you like the KO show, if anyone does, or the Miz's show, guys, look at the comparisons to an old style of what Johnny Carson from the 1990s and 80s, something when I was a teen, compared to Grayson Waller that at least, even though Twitter is not really that great, let's be honest, Twitter is a cesspool right now, whether you like a Elon Musk or not, before he even took it over, it was a damn cesspool. It was. So seeing that is at least modern. It's modern to see it. Because I'd rather see a modern look of what could be on, on pretty much if there's any type of Instagram chat. Not saying there is. Or Twitter chat than seeing nothing. I say it looks better. Now, Io Shirai comes out. I know I could say Sky. I'm still saying Shirai. She looks better that way. Because <laughs> she's damn more sexier being called Shirai than Sky. And she speaks back in Japanese to an Asuka. Then we get a Bailey coming out, pretty much saying what she was supposed to say in English, saying she's going for that damn money in the bank. Now, I'm going to also go for that money in the bank. And it don't make a difference who it is. One of us is coming after you. And then we get a little bit of... Really? Really? I got to say this. When you look at a, a Lacey Evans, before, when she reinvented herself, she tried to be part of the Marines again. But she didn't act like a fucking Marine. She acted the same way, just her clothes were different, her titties are showing, and her, sh her wrestling shoe, well, wrestling sock, tore off. Now she looks better with a damn cobra on her, her... <laughs> Oh my goodness, drill sergeant helmet, well, not, why am I saying helmet? It kind of looks like a helmet on her. Pretty much, she's doing a Sergeant Slaughter bit, but not acting like Sergeant Slaughter. She's still acting like Lacey Evans. Instead of saying something like a real soldier would, she's still saying, oh, you nasty. What are you doing, woman? You still got nowhere if she would just act more like a Sergeant Slaughter. No nonsense. Very little words, no joking around, just come there, kick ass. Be like a, 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 a Steve Macklin, a female version of Steve. Steve is not acting out. He's basically acting like a soldier who's got a chip on his shoulder. That's what he's acting like. Why don't we have that from Lacey Evans? No, she's acting like her own ordinary self, still calling all these women nasties. I, I'm, I'm done with it. She had something by going back to her roots as a SWAT officer. SWAT. She was literally SWAT for, for, for the Marines. They have special units in, in Marines for SWAT. She was a police officer in the Marines who did damn SWAT. Instead of taking a little bit more of that, instead of, and just being cold. I think that would have worked for her, but nope. And then we get Selena Vega, who basically told everyone, just keep it up. Keep uh, underestimating because I'm going to come after this. Guess what? I gave Rhea Ripley a surprise. And now you guys keep underestimating. I'm going to surprise you. At the end, and I knew she was coming out. There was no way Bianca Belair was not going to come out. I thought she was going to be the first, but she was the last. She ran out when Oscar was heading to the Titan Tron and to the, and to the back and attacked her. No one else bothered. That was it. Those two were just fighting because that's all they showed. They just showed Asuka and Bianca fighting and Asuka pulling on that damn hair of hers. That I'm wondering why she always look, makes it look all moth-written. Look, I don't got great hair. My hair is a mess. It's thin and it breaks. But she got good hair. And she makes it look like she don't wash her shit. 
I'm just saying. Then we get the match of Lacey Evans versus Selena Vega. I, I, I didn't think Lacey was going to win because Selena's got a lot of interest because of what happened in Puerto Rico. Did not think that she was going to win. I did not think Lacey Evans was going to win. But I knew she was going to have to struggle, and that's what we got. Lacey beating the crap out of uh, Selena Vega. But we get a code red from her, which is not surprising. Her cousin is code red. So doing her own cousin's move was not too surprising. I'm actually, I'm going to give it like this. Seeing that she did the code red and that Michael Cole announced it as the code red, I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see that they are acknowledging the person who made it famous. Code Red. I'm glad to see they are speaking about that. That's just me, you guys. Send below. This is one of the first of the qualifying matches for the women. Now, the next match for the men. And this was the last match. Guys, we only got four matches on this show. Four. Unless I missed one, there was only four matches. We got the next qualifying match. LA Knight versus a, a Montez Ford. The very husband of the one who just beat the crap out of an Oscar. Now, I like Montez Ford. I actually do. I do believe that he could make something. I do believe if they decide to let him do a run on his own, he can easily be an IC or US champion. Flat out, I would love to see it. But when you look at LA Knight compared to Montez Ford, or Angelo Dawkins for that matter, LA is here. These guys are here. His polished. Whether you think, oh, he's just a bite off of The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, yeah, well, guess what? It works. People love him. What did I say in my Gump report on LA Knight, the former Eli Drake? I knew when I first saw him 11 years ago, I think around 2000, 2013 when I first saw him, or 14. I'm telling you, I knew I knew, wait, 2012 or 13, my mistake. I think around that time, that's when I saw him. And I knew there was something about him that was special. It wasn't just someone just biting off the rock or biting off of a Stone Cold Steve Austin. I just felt that he was different. He took both of their aspects and turned it into something completely different. Turned it on his head, making it about the ultimate Kavokia of L.A. Knight. Yeah! Well, I'd rather do the Eli Drake, but he is LA Knight. I got to show him some respect. I didn't expect him to lose here. I, I, he had to win. He did cheat to win, but it's what you got. Um, let me give it to like this. Um, when it came to the final segment, because this is all that it mattered. Like I said in the very opening of this show... Of this review, this show. There was only one thing they cared about. One. That's the bloodline. No other storylines matter right now. I'm surprised Seth Rollins. And I did hear. Seth Rollins did give Damian Priest a shot at his title. Why? Why is he getting a shot when he lost in his damn match with AJ Styles? And Seth Rollins. Now do you understand what I was talking about? That makes no damn sense. Why would you give someone a shot at your title when he didn't win? But this was about the bloodline. Now, supposedly, a, a Adam Pierce told a Paulie that the, the Usos have been told not to come in. And they do. I got double guards. And he says, okay. I, he called in the tribal chief. Tribal chief came in with Solo. And Paul made it very clear to tell Solo how important this is about the thousand day run. And how he has to make this right. This has got to be perfect. So they go outside, and before they do, Triple H shows up. Yes, the King of Kings himself shows up, who is becoming more of an interest. Haven't you noticed, guys? Haven't you noticed that Triple H is showing up on the show a lot more lately? It's not because he's going to become a special character on the show. He's showing up. Because he's supposed to be the face man of this entire situation. Let's be honest. Vince is not going to come on screen anymore. He's done. Vince will not come on screen anymore. When everything goes bad, it will be on Triple H. Everything goes good, it'll be on Triple H. That's the end of it. 
And if you keep thinking Triple H is running everything, you're 100% wrong because it's already been reported that Sean Rossap and a couple of other outlets learned that Vince has been booking the show remotely. If you haven't heard me, he's booking it remotely. Triple H has to do what he's told. If you don't know what that means, it's simple. Triple H is an employee, so he has to do what he's told. End of story. He may be allowed to book only as long as Vince allows him to. Being chief content creator means nothing if Vince can override you at any time, which he has. So he comes out, he waits for Roman and the others, they all come in, they get in the ring, and then, when I did hear JD talk about a possible new title, and I'm going, really? A new title? So they finally decided to merge the two titles into one, because that's what Triple H said. Because of your historic run, you now have earned the right to get a new title. Here is the undisputed universal WWE Championship. And it looks no different than the others. It's just now in gold. Really? What's the difference between the, 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 the black belt and the red one? What's the difference? It's now gold. Do I care? No. That is so fucking cheap. If they, if JD likes and just Alex do, more power to them. To me, personally, it's a piece of shit. It's the same freaking title, but in gold now. What is the damn point of having something so prestigious? Because, remember, we're retiring the WWE Championship. It's now being known as the Undisputed Universal WWE Champion. What is it? D the Undisputed Universal Championship or the Undisputed Universal WWE Championship. I think that's what it's called now. It's just gold plated now. The same as the other two. One was in black. I mean, it had just a black belt on it. One was in red to show raw as universal. Now this one's in gold. And from what I can tell, the back part is in Velcro. Because when Triple H put that sucker on, he just put it on so quickly. It's Velcro. It's in Velcro. It doesn't have buckles on it and bump buckles. It's in fucking Velcro. Really? That is so fucking cheap. It's a piece of shit. I'm sorry. If you like it, more power to you. To me, it's a piece of shit. They should have changed the total design to make it feel important. To make it mean something. It's just in gold. And anyway, let's move on. As the now undisputed... Universal WWE Champion says to wherever he was, he stopped himself. He says simply, WWE Universe, acknowledge me. Actually, I kind of like that one better than him telling each and every state or country he's in to, to acknowledge him. I think now, at this point, a thousand days, that's all you've got to say. WWE Universe, acknowledge me. I think that might actually work better. But at that point, we get the Usos coming out. Triple H jumps out of the ring. The Usos get in the ring. And they make it very clear that this needs to stop. That Jimmy said simply, you have become lustful for power. You have lost your damn mind. You are treating family like really bad. And he says, did you see this guy here? He's my brother. That one right there? He's my brother brother you you're also my brother you've always been my brother you need to stop you need to stop this this needs to end and he's telling him join us let this all go join us and let's rule as the bloodline as we were before how we ruled everything and jimmy hugged him and at that point he's holding him like he wants to cry but he doesn't and he says this is like no not gonna happen and then he, he shoves him. And pretty much it's Jay, unless I'm messing up, because I know that one point, I think in the very beginnings, Jimmy did get shoved. 
but it was Jay, I think it was right after that, Jay was the one who wanted to be peacekeeping. Jay was the one who wanted this to, to, to be calm. The true head of the table showing his true colors. What did I say? This is not about Jay. No, I'm sorry. What did I say? This is not about Jimmy. This is not about Roman. This is not about Solo. This is not about Paul Heyman. It's got to be about Jay. If they don't make this about Jay and this doesn't work, it's not going to work. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. After this entire talk and right before the, the, the hug, you see that Solo was asked, what, what do you think? Because both Jimmy and Jay are, well, Jimmy is the one that's talking, Jay is not. They're trying to think for Solo. And Roman gave him the mic. And he says, I acknowledge you, Tribal Chief, but these two are my brothers. He gave the mic. He walks over. And he stands there. That's when the hug happened. That's when Jimmy tr tried to um, get ready to start a fight. And that is when Jay, and I'm, I'm right now, that's when Jay tried to stop it. He tried to stop it saying, he needs you. He needs you. I, he needs him. And that's J Jimmy. He needs Solo. He needs them. He's the true, the true mod moderator of the family. You can see it. And here's where it gets interesting. Because he still didn't agree. Solo nails him. Knocks him to the floor. And you hear Michael Cole. And if I'm missing something, I'm not surprised. I'm still drowsy right now from my medicine. <laughs> oh, my throat hurts. But you see Solo, Samoan Spike, Jimmy. Jay's by his side. And then Solo, Roman, and Paulie go to the back. And you hear Michael Cole say, it looks like Jimmy has been ostracized from the bloodline. Then you hear Paulie talking to Roman and say, what about Jay? And Roma looked back and he said, Jay's going to do like he always does. He's going to fall in line. And then they walk away. This is done. Jay Uso is a question. So we will eventually know. But Jimmy is now supposedly out of the bloodline. He is done. The question is going to be, what would they make Jimmy do now? Will he be wrestling by himself? Which he should. Will he change his ring attire? Which I hope. Because if he's going to be off on his own, I hope he changes his clothes. And when we see that, and I really hope they're not going to just have Roman, um, well, I'm going to leave it about Jay Uso. Because eventually I may do another Gump report on Jay Uso again if they are going down the road of the bloodline and Jay Uso being the last one to stay with Roman, and he says, you're not the, the true head of the table. I am. I'm going to wait. I really do believe that they will go down that route because it makes the best sense. But it's just me. Peace.